Hi everyone, my name is Associate Professor Rachel Haynes Wesson. I'm the Director of Work Integrated Learning at the Business School. The reason for this little video that also has audio is to begin by explaining what an experiential learning framework is for your unit of study. If you're seeing this video for the first time, it means that we've classified your unit as a Work Integrated Learning offering for the Business School. What does this matter? And who cares? This is exactly what this video will try and demonstrate. So whether you're traveling overseas, whether you're doing an experiential learning locally, whether you're working for a not-for-profit or a corporation, when a unit of study has been classified as a work integrated learning experience for students, it's because we are really trying to make a real valued learning experience for you as a student in terms of understanding your role, your position in a global context, but also in terms of your career development. For example, we often allow students the opportunity to travel overseas to work with industry on consulting projects or project-based works that are solving real problems that businesses need solved today or for the future. We do this because we know it broadens content for our students and allows them to have a global perspective, so a deep kind of learning. Global citizenship is really important. We are in a period now where technology allows people to come together quite easily, to be inventive, and also to problem solve in terms of group work or a real problem that is occurring in the business or in society. We also realise realize that these types of experiences improve your grades, retention, so you really want to be motivated and stay throughout, and that you have a great completion rate. We also understand that these types of learning experience enhance your graduate employability and allow you to be distinctive amongst your peers when it comes to getting that career position that you really want. So global networking is really important. Not all will units will be in an international context. They could occur in a local environment where you're working with others, or you could be working on your own in an industry context where you're having to solve problems on a daily basis. Normally, for that to be credit, you will need to do a unit of study, which means assessments. Now, we pride ourselves in making sure that our assessments align to what you're actually doing in your workplace or in your project-based environment or learning situation where you're working alongside organisations uh, to solve those difficult problems. Experiential education is not something new, it's been around for some time and it is a certain way of approaching the learning in terms of designing the unit of study so that you're developing learning that's connected to theory and also to your learning experience. And as you can see here, there's some literature that you can look at that's been around for some time and it gives you a definition of what experiential education is and it will help you understand how this unit that you're studying at the moment has been classified as an experiential learning opportunity and often will have a work integrated learning outcome, which means it's highly connected to industry. One of my favourite theorists is Kolb's. 1989 experiential learning theory framework, which is very much what I use in a work integrated learning development stage and a delivery stage of a unit of study. And as your unit has been classified as an experiential learning unit, you will find that this theory has been embedded all the way through from assessments, unit learning outcomes, graduate qualities, and specific employability skills that we want you to develop, which are non-technical, but align very nicely to your discipline area. For this to occur, there has to be four elements. The first one is an experience. It's where you feel that something is exciting or you're uncertain about something or there's a problem coming your way and you need to solve that with others. There's a real experience going on and it's linked to what would normally occur or similar to what will occur in industry. Secondly, there's some experimentation going on. The doing and the applying. You're applying theory, and you're connecting that to practice and you're learning from that experimentation. It's a place where you can feel safe by making mistakes and learning and learning from those mistakes and thinking how about how will you develop 
as an individual in the workplace and as a developing professional. Thirdly, there's thinking about theory in a deep way. So how is your study so far? How can you take away the certain theories that you've learned and link them to practice in a work environment? And then fourthly, and one of the most important ingredients is reflection. So this is where you bring points one, two and three all together via your observations and your perceptions and you articulate that really clearly, clearly using the I narrative. So your perspective on what has been going on in that experience, in certain situations that perhaps weren't always straightforward, how theory is linking to your practice and how you will bring all this together for a future plan to improve your practice as you go into your selected careers and career pathways. And in the middle of this, you have different personalities. You often will be working in groups. You'll also be working with industry. And sometimes this will happen all at once. And it can become quite stressful and sometimes confusing if that's something you're not used to. But this is what experiential learning is all about. It's about putting you in a place of not always knowing what is around the corner and problem shooting that best and it becomes difficult because at times you will need to regulate your emotions. And how do you do that in a professional way? It's something that people are challenged throughout their whole career. It's really interesting to find out what kind of person you are in the learning environment when it comes to an experiential learning framework. Are you accommodating? Are you diverging? Are you converging? Or you are assimilating? And we have an example here, which is from Cobb's area of expertise. And it isn't always specifically right. I mean, we do have blended personalities and sometimes depending on the situation, we will behave and act in a different way. That isn't always going to be the same way. But it's really important to start thinking and reflecting about how you as an individual learn, how do you learn best, and then also to consider that others around you and who you work with may learn in a different way. And this can sometimes create tension and problems to be solved because if we're not always uh, able to see how others are learning and perhaps differently to ourselves, that is normally where the main issues arise. So this is just a real quick introduction on what we at the Business School term experiential education via work integrated learning experience, which this unit that you're studying at the moment has been classified and we know it's going to be a challenge and we know that sometimes students don't always know that a lot of preparation has occurred in terms of the assessment design, the learning framework, the delivery, and how you're going to meet your industry deliverables and how that will be achieved in a group dynamic. It can be challenging and our teachers within this unit are here to help you and to further understand what it might mean to you and how you learn in your unique way in your group and your activity. I wish you all the best and thank you for listening to me about work integrated learning for experiential education.